Welcome back to Queen City Corals. I'm Graham, and today we're gonna be going over our top 10 beginner corals. All right, so what makes a good beginner coral? So the first thing is that it needs to be really hardy. It needs to be able to withstand any slight changes or swings that you may experience in a newer tank. Now, another thing that's important is that a lot of these corals that I'm recommending aren't gonna have skeletons, so they're gonna be soft corals. And what that means is they don't need to consume calcium and alkalinity to grow. What that does is it makes it so you don't have to dose anything and you can replenish all the minerals that are gonna be depleted just through water changes. Now you're still gonna need to do water changes for these corals, just not as frequently as if you have a lot of LPS or SPS, which are large polyp stony and small polyp stony corals. Now another good thing for beginner corals is that they can grow fast. So all the corals on the list today are gonna to be a little faster growers. So you don't have to sit there and wait for a really long time for them to grow into bigger pieces, and then get bigger a lot faster. So without further ado, let's start off at number 10, which is Xenia. Now, Xenia is a pretty popular coral. Uh, it grows very quickly. However, that is one of the problems and why it's at number 10 rather than a little higher up. It's a soft coral, so it doesn't grow a skeleton, but it is very quickly growing and oftentimes can overtake a tank and really kind of take it over. Part of the reason these guys are so easy is because they like higher nutrients. So I'll usually shoot for nitrates around five to 20 and phosphates between 0.03 and really 0.25. Uh, now this range is pretty good for them, but if you are introducing other corals, you might wanna bring them down a little bit. But overall, these higher nutrients are gonna make them grow a lot faster. It's recommended you put them on their own solitary rock, so that way it's harder for them to spread. But what can happen is once they fill up that rock, they can actually fling off little parts and frags and frag themselves essentially, so that way they can spread all across your tank. So it's definitely good to keep an eye on these guys and really control them so they don't get too out of hand. Next up at number nine is gonna be clove polyps. These guys are very similar to Xenia, but they're a lot more colorful. Now they aren't gonna grow as fast as the Xenia, so they are a little bit better in that sense, but they definitely can still take over a tank and I recommend putting them on their own little island. Now the good thing is that these guys usually won't self frag and kind of throw themselves all over the tank but it is good to kind of cut them back if you're able to, just to make sure that they don't start spreading off of the rock that you put them on. Now they come in a lot of really nice varieties of colors. My favorites are the ones we have here, the QCC Firestorms. We've been growing these guys out for a couple of years now and the color on them is some of the best that I've seen out of any clove polyps. And they're really popular because they're so easy and fast growing and a lot more colorful than the Pulsing Xenia that is a little bit more of a drab purple. Now these guys are also soft corals, so they don't need any alkalinity or calcium dosed into the tank, and they're gonna like a little bit higher nutrients, very similar to the Xenia. Now coming at number eight is gonna be leather corals. These guys are also a soft coral, so again, you don't need to worry about dosing calcium or alkalinity into the water, and they're also gonna like higher nutrients uh, with your phosphates and nitrates a little bit higher. These guys are also a little bit invasive and especially some like the Kenya tree or Sinularia can take over rock structures by fragging themselves and fleeing frags all over the place. But because these guys are a little bit bigger, it's usually easier to grab them and they usually don't attach as quickly. One thing to note is that toadstool leathers can actually go through something called shedding where they'll close up for a few days and get this almost like film across the top of them. But don't worry, that's just them actually replicating and usually dropping babies because they're so happy. So that's usually actually a good sign rather than a negative one. As long as it doesn't happen too frequently, that's just their natural growth process and it means they're really happy in your tank. Number seven, and this is the first one on the list that is a hard coral. So these are gonna be acans. Acans do have a skeleton. They are LPS or large polyp stony corals but they are super easy to care for. These guys like really low light and higher nutrients. So you can keep your phosphates and nitrates a little bit higher, like some of the soft corals like. And the best way to bring out the colors on these guys is super low light. Usually between 50 and 75 par, I find gives you the best colors out of these guys. They are going to like to be fed, especially if you have them in the lower light. 
I usually recommend feeding um, mice shrimp or some sort of powdered food like Reefroids or Benepets. You can check out our video on how to feed corals up above. Uh, we've got a detailed guide on how to go through, make your food, and then end up feeding the corals. And we go through everything there that you need to know. So acans, because they do have a skeleton, are going to require calcium and alkalinity. Usually, if you just have a few pieces in your tank, water changes, either bi-weekly or monthly, are gonna be enough to replenish those nutrients. However, it's important to make sure you keep an eye on what your alkalinity and calcium levels are through regular testing. Now, you can either do this at your local fish store that probably tests water for free, or you can do this by purchasing a test kit for you to use at home. Either way, it's important to test it regularly. I usually recommend between once a week or every other week, just so that way you can stay on top of it and you don't have any massive drops that then you're trying to recover from. Uh, the biggest thing with these elements is to make sure that they're stable. You don't want any massive swings happening because that's what really angers the corals and sort of gets them a little bit stressed out and can cause them to die. Now, number six is also gonna be a large polyp stony coral. These are gonna be hammers and frog spawns. Now, I put these guys together because they're both euphilia and they're both really easy to care for. Um, they're gonna have the exact same requirements. They're gonna like low to moderate light, low to moderate flow. You really just wanna see their tentacles flowing in the water. I usually recommend a par between 80 and 150 for these guys. You can go a little bit higher, but I recommend acclimating them to that slowly, just so it's not too much of a shock on them. Now, these guys also are gonna like to eat, but it's not a requirement. Uh, you can give them a little bit of food, just like the acans, but they aren't gonna need it as much, and they'll get fluffy even without a lot of food. Now, for calcium and alkalinity, it's gonna be very similar to the acans. You wanna keep it alkalinity anywhere between seven and 10, and your calcium anywhere from 380 to 450, just to make sure that these guys are doing well in a stable environment. Your nitrates, I would recommend to keep between five and 20, and your phosphates, I'd say between 0.03 and 0.1 is gonna be where you're gonna get the best coloration and growth. Any higher, and you can start to lose a little bit of that, and they can even shrink in a little bit. A lot of times they're a good way to indicate if you need a water change, because they won't look as happy and full as they normally do. It's also important to not, with any of these corals, to not over water change because too low nutrients can actually be just as harmful as too high nutrients. They're still gonna need nitrates and phosphates in order for them to use to grow. Now, coming in at number five is gonna be trumpet corals. These guys are really easy to care for. They're an LPS or a large polyp stony corals, just like the acans and hammers, but these guys are gonna be a little bit easier and a little faster growing. Usually when you put these guys in, after a couple months, you'll have two, three, maybe even four or five new heads because they're very quick growers. They come in a variety of colors, including neon green, purple and green, even a teal variety, and several others. Now with trumpets, there's a few different species, and so it's important to separate them and not mix the different colors because they can end up stinging each other and killing each other. Now, as far as nitrates and phosphates, it's gonna be the same as hammers and some of the other corals we talked about, and same thing with alkalinity and calcium. The biggest thing is just making sure all these elements are stable. That's what the corals are really gonna prefer. Now, you can feed these guys again, but they're not gonna require it, and they're gonna be fine just photosynthesizing off the light. I usually recommend PAR for these guys anywhere from 100 to 150. You can give them a little higher light, but you wanna acclimate them. If you give them a little bit lower light, you just need to feed them a little bit more to make up for the nutritional deficit that they're gonna experience from that lower lighting. Now, coming in at number four is a lot of people's first corals. These guys are really easy to care for and they are Duncans. They're super similar to the trumpets care-wise, but you're gonna get a little bit more movement from them just because of the tentacles they have. So a lot of people will prefer them to trumpets. There's a few different colorations including green and blue, and there's even some sort of mixes where you get green and blue. So they look really cool, and these guys are also gonna grow really quickly. I have customers all the time who get one, and a couple months later they come in, and they say they have five or even 10 new heads. These guys are gonna like very similar nutrients to the rest of the corals we've talked about. It's very similar calcium and alkalinity. And again, the biggest thing is just gonna be stability and making sure that everything is nice and stable. 
Number three is gonna be a classic in the hobby that almost everyone has heard of. It is Green Star Polyp. Now, these guys are a classic for a reason. They are super easy to care for. They're a soft coral, so they're not gonna have a skeleton, so you don't have to worry about calcium and alkalinity. All you really need to worry about is keeping your nitrates and phosphates in line. I usually recommend for these guys phosphates to be between 0.03 and 0.5, and nitrates for these guys, I usually recommend between five and 50. Um, they have a pretty wide range because they're so easy to care for. Um, they don't really need to eat. They will eat though. Uh, usually I recommend powdered foods. However, they really are gonna be fine just off the light. Par wise, I usually recommend anywhere from 50 to 200. Again, if you're gonna use that higher par range, I usually recommend acclimating them to that slowly. My favorite thing to do with GSP is to put it on the back glass. It gives you this really unique look where you almost have like grass on your back wall and it'll actually grow across it. Now, one thing to remember about GSP is that it can be very invasive, so I recommend not putting it on your main rock structure. And there's actually two different kinds of GSP. There's the branching GSP, which is a little more rare and a little harder to find. And then there's the regular encrusting GSP. And so the difference between these is the branching will grow vertically as well as horizontally, whereas the regular encrusting GSP will just grow across the rocks. So these two kinds are both pretty cool. They're both really easy to care for, and that's why they're number three on the list. Coming in at number two is actually not a coral. It's technically an anemone, and it is one of the most common pieces in the hobby. It is mushroom corals. Now, mushroom corals are super easy to care for. They usually like lower light and they do great in the bottom area of the tank. I usually recommend the bottom quarter to a third of the tank is where they're gonna do best. A lot of times you can put them in a sand bed or even a low cave because they don't need a ton of light. These guys, a lot of times will love to eat and they'll open up entirely and then close up all around their food which is a really cool experience to see. But again, like with most corals, it's not required to feed them. They'll be fine photosynthesizing off the light. Now, as far as par wise, these guys are gonna like par anywhere from 50 to 120. Any higher than that, and you can run into some issues with them bleaching. So if you start to see any discoloration in these guys, I usually recommend moving them to a lower light section where they're gonna do a little bit better. As far as nitrates and phosphates, these guys are also gonna have a pretty wide range that they're comfortable with. Phosphates anywhere between 0.03 and 0.25 is gonna be just fine for them. And nitrates anywhere from five to 40 is gonna be perfectly fine. They're gonna usually do better in a little bit higher nutrients just because they're a little lower like corals. So to make up for that deficit, a lot of times they'll use the nutrients that are already in the water. These guys, especially discosoma mushrooms, can tend to take over rock structures. So it's good to either isolate them on their own rock or make sure that you have them on the sand bed or somewhere where they can't really spread too well. Now, because they are technically anemones, they can sting other corals and their sting is usually pretty harsh. So it's best to keep them away from other corals. One thing to note is they don't have any sweeper tentacles or anything. So as big as the mushroom can get is usually as big as the sting can be. Now, some mushrooms will stay a little bit smaller. They'll get three, four inches, but I've seen some that can get as big as a foot across. So it's good to give them a good bit of space in between other corals, because as they grow, they can sting them and reach out. Now, before we get to number one, our best beginner coral, I wanna do some honorable mentions here. Now, one of my favorite corals, if you've seen some of our other videos, is encrusting LPS like Cyphastrias. These guys are super easy to care for, but the reason they didn't make the cut on this list is because they can take up a lot of calcium and alkalinity because they're so fast growing. And similar to some of the other corals like GSP and Xenia, they can sort of take over a rock. And because of that, they aren't on the list, but they are super easy to care for and come in a lot of really cool varieties. Now, another couple of honorable mentions are gonna be SPS corals. These are really great beginner SPS corals because they're super easy to care for and they don't have too many requirements. It's gonna be Montiporas and bird's nests. These guys are great if you're trying to dip your toes into SPS and you've had good luck with some of the other LPS corals that we've talked about in this video. And I really recommend starting with those guys before you get into some of the harder ones like Acroporas. All right, in the moment you've all been waiting for, my favorite beginner coral. It is one of the first corals I ever got. 
and I have kept ever since I got my first one and I actually have sort of an addiction to this coral. I've got hundreds of them here at the shop. It's gonna be zoanthids. These guys come in a ton of different varieties of colors, the most out of any coral in the hobby. There's so many different varieties and they range in price anywhere from five, $10, all the way up to a couple hundred dollars. So there's a ton of variety, whether you're looking for high end or just some something bright and colorful to fill up your tank. These guys are also soft corals, so they don't have a skeleton you have to worry about dosing calcium and alkalinity for. They do like higher nutrients, so anywhere with phosphates between 0.03 and 0.25, and nitrates anywhere between five and 40, they're gonna do great in. These guys love to eat, and they'll grow a lot faster and even display better colors if you feed them. As far as par, these guys are gonna do great anywhere between 80 par and 250 par. Again, if you're going for those higher par numbers, you are gonna to want to slowly acclimate them up to that lighting, but it'll only take a couple of weeks to get them all the way acclimated to this higher lighting. And a lot of times you can get better colors out of them in the higher light. Now these guys are fast growing, so it's important to keep them under control. I usually recommend putting them all on a rock together. You can get some really cool patterning and create what's called a zoa garden. And that's where you have all these different zoas mixed up together and you get almost like a rainbow like effect because you have all these colors mixing and growing together. These guys are definitely some of the easiest in the hobby. And one of the reasons why they're my favorite is because they grow so fast, but it's always important with fast growing corals to not let them spread and take over the rock because they can irritate other corals. However, these guys don't have a sting, so a lot of times they won't overtake corals and the other corals will actually end up stinging them back. So you don't need to worry too much about them taking over a whole tank unless there's something like palithoas that are gonna be a lot more aggressive in their growth as well as get a lot taller. And the problem really with those guys is just that they can shade out other corals and they're super hardy. So even if they're getting stung, they won't really care and they'll kind of just brush it off and keep growing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like below. Make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date whenever we post a new video. I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date whenever we drop a new video and leave a like if you 